Alrighty, so there are many things to love about the country of Mexico. The fantastic food, the superb atmosphere at the Grand Prix, the football team, you know, the one that can't seem to get past the last 16 of the World Cup. And in recent times, it's brought us not one, but two Formula One drivers. While Sergio Perez is living the high life at Red Bull, having secured his first Grand Prix win at Sakir in 2020, Esteban Gutierrez is no longer part of the sport, having left in 2016. He raced for both Sauber and Haas and was a test driver for Ferrari and is part of the Mercedes F1 team setup now. But why did his career never seem to get off the ground? That's what we'll set out to discover. So, Esteban Gutierrez, why did it never seem to work? As is normal with this series, we'll start at the very beginning. Esteban was born on the 5th of August 1991 and began racing in karts in 2004, aged 13. He performed well in karts, winning championships and races in Mexico, and so, aged just 15, he moved into an actual car for the first time. He competed in the Formula BMW USA series, and he was the second youngest driver in the field. But, despite his age, he finished second in the championship, driving with maturity to take four wins, eight podiums, nine pole positions, and two fastest laps. Pretty impressive stuff for the 15-year-old, nonetheless. He took part in the Formula BMW World Final and the BMW ADAC series with no notable results in the three races that he entered. 2008 saw a move across the pond to Europe, competing in the Formula BMW Europa series where he took seven wins, 12 podiums, nine fastest laps, three pole positions and won the championship convincingly. However, half the field of this series don't even have Wikipedia pages, and the only other name I recognise from this series is that of Danny Juncadella, so it'd be expected for him to win the championship, and he delivered. He finished third in the Formula BMW World Final, with Alexander Rossi winning that event, and he was a guest competitor in the German Formula 3 series. I mean, Esteban looks like a future star from these results. Sadly, it didn't stay this way. 2009 was a tough year for Esteban. He competed in the Formula 3 Euro Series and he scored two podiums in a tough field which featured the likes of Valtteri Bottas, Jules Bianchi, Sam Bird, Roberto Meri and Brendan Hartley. He finished ninth in the standings, but at least he beat Brendan Hartley. He scored a podium as a guest competitor in the British Formula 3 Championship and finished 17th in the Formula 3 Masters one-off event. 2009 was a very tough year for Esteban, so we'll move on to 2010. For 2010, he was in the GP3 series, and this should have been a real test up against some fierce competition. Instead, he breezed the championship win with five wins, nine podiums, three pole positions, and seven fastest laps. His nearest competitors were Robert Wickens, Nico Muller, Alexander Rossi, Roberto Meri, and Rio Harianto. Now, these names aren't bad, but they haven't really set motorsport alight recently. Not to take anything away from this dominant performance, but he should have won the championship, so kudos for him for pulling through and delivering. He also has had some guest appearances in the British Formula 3 and Formula 3 Euro series, but his GP3 success is far more important as it was fantastic. So far, 2009 aside, Esteban looks extremely worthy of a Formula 1 seat, and he looks a great prospect. Let's move to 2011, shall we? 2011 meant to move to the GP2 Championship, driving for the Lotus ART team. This would be a real test for Esteban, not only in a far quicker car, but also the fact he had faced some serious competition. The championship was dominated by Roman Grosjean, and Esteban struggled, storing a single win in Valencia and another podium at the Hungaro Ring, ending up 13th in the championship, which wasn't great, but he finished behind some talented names such as Jules Bianchi, Guido van der Garde, and Sam Bird, oh, and Marcus Ericsson. However, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt as it was his first season in the championship. In 2011, he was also snapped up by Sauber as a test driver, and this meant a potential seat for 2013 if he did well in GP2. So, 2012 would be make or break for Esteban. 2012 started well for our mate Esteban with three podiums in the first four rounds of the GP2 series. However, he dropped the ball until the Valencia round, where he would win the feature race and also win feature races at both Silverstone and the Hungaro ring, ending up third in the championship behind Davide Valsecchi and Luis Razia. The 2012 GP2 field is notoriously known for being quite poor, but still third place in the standings and three feature race wins was enough to convince Sauber to sign him full-time for 2013, pairing him up with Nico Hülkenberg, and this would be a tough test for Esteban. Now, to take you through his time at Sauber, it's time for me to bring in fellow F1 YouTuber Dylan, also known as Dylan James GP, to talk you through these two seasons. Sauber would be looking to improve on their successful 2012 campaign, bringing in the experienced Nico Hülkenberg as a replacement to the McLaren-bound Sergio Perez, and replacing Kamui Kobayashi with Esteban. Esteban started his career quite well, finishing highest of the rookies in the opening round, but failed to really get his season going. Whilst Esteban struggled with the car, his teammate consistently scored good points for the team. 
China was a real low for S-Ban following a collision with Adrian Sutil. He would only score points in one race, with an excellent 7th place in Japan. However, over the course of the season, Hülkenberg would consistently outqualify and outrace him, taking a 4th place in Korea too. Of the 57 Constructors points Sauber scored, Esteban got only 6 of them, but at least he kept his drive with Sauber in 2014. In 2014, we saw lots of regulation changes, and it also brought us cars with noses that looked like this. Well, this wasn't a great season for Esteban either. At the third round in Bahrain, Esteban was driving a quiet race, struggling with the overweight Sauber, until on lap 41, Lord Pastor Maldonado sent him flipping and spinning like Neymar against Mexico in the World Cup in 2018. The other real low point of his season was crashing out of 8th place in Monaco, and then he had no other chances to score. He was dropped by Sauber at the end of 2014, and his career with a Swiss outfit wasn't a great success. Anyway, it's time for me to pass it back to James and let him keep discovering this Mexican lad's career. If he wants to. Cheers Dylan for that, and for 2015, Esteban found himself as the Ferrari test driver, which at least he meant he was still in a Formula 1 team setup. However, for 2016 he got the call up to join the Haas team, and here he'd be looking to up his game following a poor 2014 season. However, he didn't start in the best way, as whilst Grosjean scored a superb 6th place in the American Outfit's first race in Formula 1, Esteban was caught up in a huge accident with Fernando Alonso. The accident was horrifying for all watching and I'm very glad Fernando walked away from it. From there, Esteban became the king of finishing in 11th place, as he did so 5 times throughout the season. I guess this shows some sort of consistency? Now, nah, but seriously, he was outscored by Grosjean by 29 points, and outscored by Pascal Wehrlein, who was driving the Manor car, or JCB Bulldozer, however you want to look at it, and by Stoffel van Dorn, who was driving the McLaren Honda car, and he only drove in one round at Bahrain. I know he was unlucky with all of those 11th place finishes, but still. He left Formula 1 at the end of the 2016 season as he was dropped by Haas, and after brief spells in IndyCar and Formula Scale Electrics, I'm sorry, I mean Formula E, he returned to F1 as a development and reserve driver for Mercedes. But this doesn't really mean a lot, considering the only time they needed a reserve driver, they just went and nicked George Russell from Williams. Anyway, overall, we'll ask, was Gutierrez worthy of a Formula 1 seat? Yes, his junior results were very promising indeed, and he came to Formula 1 with a lot of potential. Was he worthy of a Formula 1 championship? No, I mean just 6 points in 59 Formula 1 appearances isn't great. So where did it all go wrong? I think a combination of bad luck, unfortunate career timing and a lack of top pace cost Esteban a solid career in Formula 1. But anyway, hopefully his role at Mercedes is doing him good and he does whatever is best for him in the future because he was a nice guy to have in and around the paddock. He did struggle with the 2014 Sauber car as it was horrible to drive and so I think this season was perhaps the one that really cost him a long career in Formula 1. Anyway, if you did enjoy this episode, make sure to give the video a like. Subscribe if you are new around here and you want to see Formula 1 content three times a week. And I will catch you in the next one. Later, guys. Mm -hmm.